was left standing. Devil May Cry 3, Dante's Awakening. If you've watched my Devil May Cry 2 review, I felt that the game was a massive misstep in every way, hence the subtitle. However, fortunately Capcom knew that the game was a disappointment, and so they were encouraged to try harder for the inevitable sequel. Hidaki Itsuno once again directed the game, but instead of continuing the story from where Devil May Cry 2 left off, the decision was made to make Devil May Cry 3 a prequel to the original. I think prequels can work well provided that they fill in some details of the backstory and lore of the series, and that's exactly what this game does. And it introduces so many new memorable characters who I will get into right now. But before we begin, this game gives you the option of choosing between gold orbs and yellow orbs, which both work the same way they did in the previous games. And you better pick gold, do not pick yellow. Let's start with that story. We open with a really cool shot of two people fighting to the death. The rain effects are so well done. Dante has not yet opened up his shop, still in the beginning phases. He's visited by a mysterious man who wants him to stop Dante's brother Virgil. Ooh, Virgil, so we're finally getting some insight on Dante's mysterious brother. But anyway, Dante was such a bore in the previous game, how are they gonna make him- He's getting crazy. Let's rock. That's one way to do it. So Dante puts on his coat and heads out to confront his brother. The two villains of the game are Arkham and Virgil. Arkham! Yeah, with a name like that, how could he not be the bad guy? Meanwhile, there's a mysterious lady who's also going after Arkham for her own reasons. That's Lady! I like Lady. Now let's talk about each of the characters real quick. Dante, well, in this game, he finally finds his voice, both figuratively and literally. In DMC1, he was very subdued, while in DMC2, he was very boring. But in this game, he's a complete trickster and prankster, and he's definitely arrogant, but never in an annoying way. He's a cocky SOB, but you love him for being a cocky SOB. One of my favorite scenes involving Dante is whenever he defeats a boss or whenever he does something really cool.
you do get the sense that this is a personal mission for Dante. After all, this involves his brother, who Dante has mixed feelings about. Virgil is his brother, so he wants to help save him, but at the same time, he knows he's the only one who can stop him. Maybe they're like Zuko and Azul from Avatar The Last Airbender. Foolishness, Dante. Foolishness. Might controls everything. And without strength. As for Virgil, now this guy, he's arrogant, subdued, and stoic, and yet that makes him so memorable. He's not like Arkham. Virgil wants power, but he doesn't want power for power's sake. He has a code of honor, and there are boundaries that he won't cross. We do see scenes that show that he still has a fondness for his mother, and I wonder if he still truly cares for Dante deep down. They are bitter rivals, but yet they are still brothers. If I would compare Virgil to anyone, I would compare him to Sasuke from Naruto. Virgil is basically Sasuke's character arc, but done better. Virgil is everything Sasuke should have been. Lady. Well, like I said, I like Lady. She's much better than Lucia, about on par with Trish, and she's on a personal vendetta mission because, you see, Arkham is her father. She blames him for the death of her mother, and there's a sense that she still wants to save him, as evidenced by the fact that he lays dying with this speech. You're such a sweet child. Just like your mother. As for her relationship with Dante, well, they get off on the wrong foot. Dante seems to want to help her, but Lady views Dante as a demon. Forget it, because I make it a point not to go out with women who shoot me in the head. Thank you! At least someone has common sense. Now for Arkham. Well, this guy is a great villain. He's everything Arius was not. He's a cruel, vicious manipulator. He wants to become a god. He has two forms, his main form, the Arkham form, and he takes the form of Jester. A comical, well, jester who likes to play tricks on everyone. Of course, that makes shooting him all the more fun! Or is that too difficult for you? <laughs> Get to the point, or you want to keep on dancing? When he reveals his plan, he takes over as the main villain. For Dante, the fight is much more personal with Virgil, but Arkham is the more pressuring threat. The story hits its midpoint when Arkham reveals his true colors. Everyone's at their lowest point and it works beautifully. Dante and Lady both have personal stakes in this conflict because it's a family member they are after. Dante his brother, and Lady her father. The story is a little cheesy, but I find that makes it no less effective. That's what I like about Devil May Cry. It embraces its silliness when the situation calls for it, and when it needs to be serious, it is serious. Now for the graphics and presentation. The character models are beautiful in this game. Dante definitely looks much younger than he did in the previous two games, and the voice acting is top-notch. This is the first time Dante is played by Ruben Langdon, and this guy just is Dante down to a T. Virgil is played by Daniel Southworth, who I'm familiar with because he played Eric on Power Rangers Time Force. He definitely captures Virgil's cold, withdrawn emotion. Even Lady and Arkham have great voice actors too. The graphics and environments are once again top-notch for their time. This was near the end of the PS2's life cycle, and I must say it's aged well for the most part. Now for the gameplay. Oh man, they took what worked from DMC 1 and 2 and refined it to perfection. Dante plays exactly the same as he did in the previous two games, but everything is much faster than before. The main draw of the game, however, is the new styles Dante can use. You start off with four styles, Trickster, Swordmaster, Gunslinger, and Royal Guard. The circle button has a unique action depending on what style you pick. Trickster is one that focuses on defense as it allows Dante an evade button that doesn't require using the dodge mechanics. Swordmaster, the one I usually use, prioritizes offense, allowing you to do this cool sword attack. Gunslinger prioritizes the use of Dante's weapons as he will do a cool little trick gun attack when he has them. Royal Guard is the one I use the least because I have a hard time pulling it off, but it allows you to do a counterattack, so it's definitely for expert players. You get more styles later. The Quicksilver style, which allows Dante to slow down time, and the Doppelganger, which lets Dante summon a shadow to attack. My only real problem with this is you can only select one at a time, and switching between them can only be done in between missions or when you're at a statue to trade in red orbs for new abilities and healing items. I really wish I could switch between them at will. 
Dante once again gets access to new swords and guns, and this time you can freely switch between your swords at will, but unfortunately your limit is only doing two at a time. Not sure what's up with that. My favorite new sword is Agni and Ruda, which allows Dante to do some pretty cool elemental attacks. There's Cerberus, which allows Dante to use what is essentially Ninchukus, Nivan, which lets Dante use a wicked guitar, and finally Beowulf, which allows Dante to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The guns are very cool too. In addition to Ebony and Ivory and the shotgun returning, you have the new Artemis gun that allows Dante to shoot arrows and they come in handy. Then there's the Spire, which basically gives Dante a sniper rifle. I like it. Then finally, once you beat Lady, you get access to the Kalina Anne, which allows Dante to use a rocket launcher. About damn time, but it has a very slow startup. So with this much customization, it's up to you to play Dante as you see fit. The most noticeable change is the stylish meter. You get ranked from D to triple S, and it's not about doing the same thing. You need variety in your attacks, so make sure you change up your attacks. Once you unlock more abilities and more health, Dante again becomes a powerhouse. He doesn't get his devil trigger until midway through the game, which is due to story purposes, as this is a prequel after all. But I will say about the game, is that this game is hard. Apparently they took to heart the fact that DMC2 was so easy, so they basically made normal mode in America to be hard mode. But it doesn't really matter, I'm having so much fun that the difficulty was a welcome challenge. I like a challenge, just not when it's done in unfair increments. The bosses in the game, well they definitely made up for DMC2's lackluster boss battles. First up is Cerberus, who requires you to knock the ice off of their heads before you go to town. It's an interesting way to freshen up players. The Gigaped. Oh man, this boss is annoying because I didn't have the double jump when I first fought him. Yeah, that's one thing that bothers me. You have to buy the double jump ability for each style to be able to use it, and it costs 20,000 red orbs each time. Why? Why is it not enough that I bought it once? This boss battle took nearly 20 minutes to beat on my first time. Then comes Agni and Ruda, which is a pretty fun dual boss that allows you to go head to head with them in the sword duel. You have to weaken them both at the same time, or else one will absorb the other's power. My favorite part comes from when you beat them in the cutscene that ensues. No talking. Good. The first time you fight Virgil, he's the easiest, but it's a sign of things to come. I love every time Dante and Virgil fight. It just feels so personal. The Leviathan Heart has three main bodies to attack. You have to destroy one of the first two and then hit the main body. Really not much to it. Navon is a very much a get back here bosses. You have to wait until she lets out her darkness to be able to hurt her. It takes a bit, but I really enjoy the cutscene that plays when you beat her. Then comes Biowolf, a huge wolf that charges at you. The key is to get in close and then back up before he can attack. Next up is Geryon, which is a horse attached to a carriage, and it's actually a pretty fun boss fight since it charges at you and requires you to think on your feet. Finally, that leads to a second boss fight with Virgil, and this time he has Biowolf at his disposal. So once again, it's about getting up close and personal whenever you fight him. Finally, Dante and Lady come to heads. Lady is very much a get back here boss since she likes to get away from a distance and attack you from afar, which makes sense. Lady's weapons are clearly about long distance, so it makes sense that she'd be a long distance fighter. But fortunately, Dante and Lady finally come to terms that they are not each other's enemies. Doppelganger fights similarly to Phasm from DMC1, in that you have to break the mirror to attack him directly. Now it's time for the final showdown. Dante confronts Arkham, and it's a pretty standard fight, but then Dante gets some epic help. I've 
come to retrieve my power. You can't handle it. Look at you, making a big dramatic entrance and stealing my spotlight. What? You don't possibly believe that he deserves to be our main event now, do you? Now that you mention it, you're right. All oh, right, this is badass. Dante and Virgil teaming up together. Fighting with Virgil is a lot of fun, and it's really just a blast to see the two sons of Sparta working together. A shame they took different paths because then they wouldn't be mortal enemies. I'll try it your way for once. Remember what we used to say? Jackpot. Badass. From then, the game is wise enough to have Lady be the one to finish off Arkham since, after all, Arkham is her father, therefore putting him down is unfortunately her responsibility. Goodbye, father. <gasps> no! Now it's time for the final showdown between the two brothers. Virgil is a pretty fun boss fight and requires you to put all your skills to the test. Every time Dante and Virgil go at it, you just really feel the impact. Make sure you bring plenty of healing items to this fight though, you will need them. This is probably my favorite final battle in the whole series so far. Of course, as this is a prequel, we know just what Virgil's fate will be. Dante and Lady meet up and we get a pretty heartfelt scene. Are you crying? It's only the rain. The rain already stopped. The devils never cry. Dante clearly wanted to save his brother, but realized he couldn't. <laughs> but as always, there's still more stuff to do. Well, bring it on. I love this. This is what I live for! I'm absolutely crazy about it! This is the first time DMC had playable end credits. It took a while, but I eventually got 100 kills, which does unlock a secret ending that leads us into the original game. Before I wrap this up, the special edition allows you to play as Virgil, and he's a lot of fun to use. He only has one style and three weapons that he can use at once. Man, Virgil thinks he's so cool, but unfortunately he doesn't have much of a story, just one cutscene in the beginning, and I didn't feel much drive to play through this mode. It's cool to play as Virgil, but I wish he had his own unique campaign instead of just playing through Dante's levels. Devil May Cry 3 Dante's Awakening truly is an awakening. It's where the series perfected its formula. Everything about it is faster, the gameplay, the enemies, Dante, and it works brilliantly. So far, this is my favorite game in the franchise. Capcom had won the crowd back and the future seemed bright for the series. 
and with that a sequel was inevitable. But would it live up to the high standards of this game? Well, join me next time when we look at Devil May Cry 4. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. What happened next? Nothing, really. We took care of all the remaining devils, and that was it. I still have a job to do that's far from done, which is to eliminate every last demon. I need to ensure that monsters like my father never come about again. And he promised to help me hunt down the demons, even though he's part one himself. But now I realize that there are humans as evil as any devil, as well as kind and compassionate demons in this universe. At least I've found one so-called devil who is able to shed tears for those he cares about. That's enough for me to believe in him. Now I can start my business. Oh, speaking of a kind devil, he finally decided on a name for his shop. It took him quite a while to pick one. Wanna know the name? Devil, Devil May Cry. Cry.